think you have enough money to retire on? Typical financial planning has failed, forcing millions of Americans to depend on Social Security for 90% or more of their income. You are listening to Wealth Talks with Dr. Tom and John McPhee, bringing you the facts so you can thrive in life. Many retirement calculators are out there that will tell you how much you need to have to retire, but there's no calculator that can guarantee how much you will need in retirement. Why is that, Dad? Well, things happen in life. Inflation, taxes, health care, assisted living costs, maintenance, and emergencies. And so what we're seeing is that People that are 65 years old typically have enough money to last just about 9.7 years in retirement income. And we're seeing that the average man is dying, I mean, excuse me, is uh, is running out of money about eight and a half years before they die. Whereas wow. a woman is running out of money about 10, almost 11 years before she dies, all because of these calculators and typical financial planning that has said, oh, you've got enough money, money to live the rest of your life. And this is not just averaging the whole world together, because this, obviously some, uh, some countries don't have the standard of living that we get to uh, enjoy and appreciate here in America. This is the average American man and woman. It is. It's really, it's really sad. The median 401k balance for 60 to 69-year-olds in the United States is $63,000. That's not a lot of money. The average IRA balance for those 60 to 64 is only 165000 And what this is doing is it's leaving 50% of married couples and 70% of unmarried couples, uh, unmarried people, <laughs> uh, uh, depending on Social Security, for 50% or more of their income. Wow. And a lot of people are just depending on Social Security for more than that. Uh, we all know that. Right. We all know somebody who is depending on Social Security for a good part of their income. In fact, is according to the Social Security Administration, 21% of married couples and 45% of unmarried couples are depending on Social Security for 90% or more of their income. So, so let's let's try to put that into perspective. You know, per, talking about percentages, sometimes that feels like a little bit like we have a head, our head in the clouds. What does that percentage really mean? So let's let's try to break this down here. Two out of every ten married couples, or about four to five of unmarried people, are relying on Social Security for uh, for ninety percent or more of their income. That's a little. That's a lot of people. It is, and when you think about what that Social Security income is, the average check is somewhere around fourteen hundred dollars a month. Okay, which. Um, really doesn't even pay for lodging in many places in the United States, let alone health care costs, transportation costs, food and groceries, utilities, and the things like that. Sure. So all of these retirement calculators that are out there, they're making a lot of uh, assumptions about different factors in the future. One of those factors is inflation. That's uh, probably one of the biggest factors, even in the calculations that we do uh, for clients that are looking at different passive income options, inflation is one of the biggest things it that is. you have to keep in mind. Why is it such a big, uh, a big item on this list? Well, it's an insidious tax. It's a tax that nobody really sees, but it's always there and it's creeping up behind you, stealing from you what you thought was yours. For example, it'll take $175, almost $176, to purchase in 2020 what $100 would purchase in January of 1994. That so means you have to have $76 more today than what you had in 1994 to purchase the same item. So that's only 26 years ago, and it's almost doubled the, uh, the amount of money that you have to purchase the same thing. And inflation is like any other exponential curve. It destroys more and more of your dollar the longer it's going on. And, and it, it has been happening ever since 1913 when uh, we were um, taken off the, the absolute gold standard and then really has accelerated since 1971 when Nixon took us off of any semblance of a gold standard. Interesting. You know, so, so what this really means, if we're going to put it into easy terms here, is that if you 
a need, $100,000 a year to live on, you retire, and inflation stays at the same rate that it has over the last 26 years, from 1994 to 2020, then 26 years from now, you don't need $100,000 of income. You need $175,000 of income That's in order correct. to keep your same lifestyle. That, uh, that adds up over time. Uh, how how much how quickly does it add up? Well, let's just say that you're living on ten thousand dollars a month today. Okay, and you decide to take one of the standard, typical financial planning rules and say, "I'm going to live on seventy percent when I retire." So seventy percent of the income that you were used to, right? Okay. And I'm going and I'm going to spend it down at four percent, um, according to the another standard, typical financial planning method. Okay, and. Uh, and I plan on living 30 years, from 65 to 95. That means I'm going to need um, almost $2 million, $1,930,000, uh, $1, earning 5% every year in order to make it, due to, just to, due to inflation, to be able to live on $7,000 a month yeah. in my retirement. Wow. And that's after fees, 5% that's annually after, after fees. fees. That's taking a lot of risk in the market to now make that, that happen. That $1.9 million is a far cry from the 63000 and the one hundred sixty-five dollars that people have in their IRA and 401k. Mm -hmm. We add those two together, you've got just a little over you know, $200,000. we are way, way short by a factor of 10 Okay. Yeah, that, that's amazing. And you know, I know, I know you uh, you got this number, this one point nine million number from a popular retirement calculator that's on correct. the internet. And I was figuring out just this morning before the show, you, if you're living on ten thousand dollars a month, that's one hundred twenty thousand dollars a year. If you take that and divide it into the one point nine million, that is a withdrawal rate. More than the four percent rule that everyone talks about, it's actually over six percent. Yeah, which isn't sustainable long term. That's not sustainable. So and if 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 the market does go up and down, and you know if the it's not a question of if the market goes up and down, it's a question of when the market goes up and down. When the market goes up and down, that could seriously make a a, a big effect in your ability to continue to pull that ten thousand dollars a month to live on, and remember. That doesn't necessarily take into account inflation. Well, the other thing, John, that is really uh, puzzling to a lot of people that retire is they may face taxation. Uh, they thought that uh, once you retired and weren't working and producing income, there was not going to be any taxes. But that's not necessarily the case. Why um, is that? Well, it's, you know, that 165000 in your IRA, that $63,000 that you've stuck away in your 401k, that money has been growing tax-free since the time you started contributing to those accounts. And when you take it out, that money has to be taxed. Now, some people say, well, if I don't take it out, what happens? Well, you're forced to take that money out, whether you want to or not. Um, used to be at 70 and a half, now it's at 72. So when that money comes and out... And most people will need to take it because that's where they've saved for retirement. That's correct. And if you take... Um, Enough of this money out, it could affect your Social Security and that um, you could start being taxed on even your Social Security benefit, which a lot of people are shocked about. Yeah, that, that you can actually pay tax on your Social Security as income. Um, what, what is the limit uh, now where you, you uh, there, there's two thresholds. I know there's one at 50% where 50% where of your Social Security income becomes taxed as income. There's another threshold then where it's like 85%. It's somewhere around... It's either twenty four or twenty six hundred dollars a month that you're making, um, where you'll be taxed on fifty percent of your Social Security benefit. I believe it's thirty six hundred dollars a month where you begin uh, being taxed on eighty five percent of your Social Security benefit. Okay, so if you're if you're wanting to live on more than just uh, 30, twenty twenty six hundred or thirty six hundred dollars a month, then you need to look into what the potential taxes could be, even on your Social Security income. There's another area that really um, throws a monkey wrench in retirement, and that is health care and assisted living costs. Mm. Many people have not planned on this, um, and it comes as a shock that um, in 2019, a healthy male could expect to pay $135,000 over his lifetime just in health care costs, while a female should expect to pay over 150000 during her retirement just for health care costs. Wow. 
Um, and I know it, on both sides of uh, both your family and mom's family, um, assisted living was one of the uh, items on the list that not everyone in the family saw coming. That's correct. According to Genworth Financial, the average cost of assisted living in 2018 was $48,000 a year across the country. And if you live in a northern state, expect to pay more than that. If you live in a southern state, expect to pay a little bit less than that. Uh, we're a kind of in a southern state. My mom's costs are around forty, forty-four thousand dollars $44,000 a year. So it's a little bit lower than the average. But if we were in the northern state when she was up in Oregon, it, it was um, closer to 60000 Wow. So, so these, are, these are costs that people don't think of. And they think, well, that... Oh well, this Medicare will take care of it, and um, maybe it will, and maybe it won't, uh, depending on uh, how sustainable uh, Medicare is. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, and, and, and even if you are depending on Medicare, it's not going to provide the standard of the, care that uh, you yeah. probably want. The quality of care goes down in Medicare homes. Mm -hmm. It's it's a known fact. So the big picture here is health costs and assisted living are rising and most likely will continue to rise as demand for such services increases. And as the baby boomers are retiring 10000 $10, a day for the next how many years? Um, I, I don't remember know. how many years. We're, we're already a few years into that. We they're, are. I think it's the next 11 rate. or 12 years, though, okay. that's going to happen. Interesting. So health care costs, taxes, inflation, um, there were five things, right? There's, there are. There's, more there's than two this. more. One of them is maintenance. Let's get all the bad news over. You know, <laughs> a lot of um, a lot of people um, have their own home paid for by the time they retire. They think fine and dandy, we're cool here. Um, they have their car paid for, all the things that they think are going. But then they forget that there's going to be maintenance costs on those. Mm -hmm. What happens when the tornado comes through and rips your roof off? What happens when? Um, just wear and tear and, uh, makes it unsafe for you to climb uh, the stairs to your to your own home. Mm -hmm. What happens when you need a, a ramp put in for a wheelchair accessibility? What happens when the bathroom needs to be remodeled so you can stay at home to take a shower? What happens when the toilet has to be raised so that you can still be there by yourself and all these costs add up and you're probably not going to be the one doing those things and so the uh, expense even if you've is higher do it yourself mm -hmm. guy or or lady all of your life and the same is true with the car or any other piece of personal property that you own um, it's important to be thinking about downsizing and budgeting for these expenditures long before they happen because when they happen you could be in a position where you're not physically able to do it, like you said, or mentally you don't even know it's done and it can cause a hazard forcing you to go into assisted living. Yeah, that that's no fun. So we, we've got all of these things here. Um, and the last one on this list here, uh, emergencies. What, um, what type of emergencies should someone plan for in advance? Well, the truth of the matter is, is you really can't plan for an emergency. Uh, we've talked to clients that said they were set for life and all of a sudden, um, a family emergency happens where now they're raising their grandchildren. Mm. How do you plan for something like that? Yeah, you don't. Uh, there could be an emergency where you could be in a car wreck and you could lose uh, a leg. Uh, we have friends that um, are retired and uh, took them a year to learn how to walk again. What happens there? Who's paying for that? How does that stress your finances? These are things that really can't be planned for. And that's why typical financial planning has failed to begin with, is they're saying, this is the number you need to retire on. And the example that we used here, it was 1.9 million. But how far is 1.9 million going if you're raising three of your grandkids and <laughs> putting them through college? Hmm. How far does that go if all of a sudden you um, have a leg that's missing? And now you need to hire someone to come in for a year to cook you while you learn how to rewalk with a, with a, um, a prosthetic. Yeah, that's a, that's not fun. So the truth of the matter is, is that we need to be planning to create a passive type of income that is going to sustain us in retirement and not depend on some fixed number that has been hoarded away and stored someplace, because that is the recipe for failure. That is why typical financial planning has failed, and that's why so many people are dependent on Social Security today, is they haven't planned to live 
a full lifetime. They plan to retire. And retirement um, should not be that you stop producing. Yeah, you know, Rabbi Daniel Lappin talks about that in his book, Thou Shall Prosper, that if he, and he likens retirement to a game of golf. If you're, if you're planning to retire, then your swing is not going to be, if, if you're planning to retire partway through life, your swing is never going to be as powerful as if you plan to go all the way through the follow through. That's correct. Uh, throughout the end. It's not bad to save up money. Uh, and, and that's the other side of this program. You know, maybe some people will be looking at this list of five things. They'll be hearing uh, what, what we're saying about these today. And they'll say, well, why should I even try to, to save that up? Is that a good thing? Well, you know, savings is essential to making an economy roll, and um, we like to use the term keep rather than save, mm. simply because saving implies someone else taking charge of your money and you hoarding it away for a later date. But keeping your money is talking about uh, reserving part of your income so that you can nurture it and um, coddle it and feed it and groom it and make it grow and produce. Mm -hmm. And it might be that um, as you near retirement, you're looking at contracts with insurance companies called annuities that are going to guarantee that you'll have an income as long as you live. So you're not running out of money eight, 12 years before you die. Mm -hmm. But you will have that money and you can tie it to the inflation market so that it, it increases with inflation every time you get a paycheck from the annuity. Okay. So there's all kinds of things that typical financial planners have completely said that's ridiculous. It doesn't earn a high enough rate of return. But life insurance and annuities are a great way to create a passive income for you long after you're unable to produce like you are today. Interesting. And so even if you don't uh, continue working at the same job that you've worked for most of your life, you know, there, there are other things that you can do to continue to be useful. Uh, maybe managing your money uh, differently will help you and create a foundation of passive income that you can do uh, some of those things more effectively. And that's, that's the goal that we're looking at here. What we're looking With, at is, is guarantees for the future too, not speculative returns. Exactly. Because that so 1.9 million that the, that the financial calculator can spit out at you that's based on typical financial planning doesn't tell you anything about what's guaranteed. It's just telling you sure. if you can gain this amount of money and res keep it in reserve and earn this return every year and... But those are not possible yeah, without a, a legally binding contract that says this is guaranteed to you mm -hmm. for the rest of your life. And that is what we have to be focusing on in order to avoid the pitfalls of the Social Security fiasco and the fact that people are just living way longer than their money supply lasts. That's good. Well, if you have questions that you would like to hear um, as answered here on the Wealth Talks show, send me an email, john, J-O-H-N, at wealthtalks.com. And we'll be sure to get those answered for you here on the show. And if you would like to talk to an agent, give us a call at 702-660-7000. And you can talk to one of the agents here at Life Benefits to help you understand what you need to do to prepare for the future so that you don't become one of the 90% that uh, are depending on Social Security for your income and retirement. That's right. It makes sense to plan for emergencies, to uh, plan for the maintenance costs while you can, get the guaranteed passive income. Realize that taxes could take a lot of uh, passive income that you plan for in a traditional manner. Uh, make sure you think about that ahead of time because it's always easier to do something now than to do something later when it might be too late. And finally, inflation, that's always going to be with us. It's a, uh, it's a factor of the, uh, the economy, the environment that we live in. So do your best to plan around that. Get that guaranteed foundation, something that will keep up, that will give you what you need in order to thrive in life. You're listening to Wealth Talks, where we bring you the facts so you know what to do to thrive in life. Have a wonderful week.